Good evening, everyone, for Westview High School and Emma. It's Westview Warrior Basketball streaming live on LaguanaMedia.com. This is Jerry Hostetler along with Jamie Miller. And tonight, Coach Chandler Pribble brings his Warriors to their home hardwood to meet up with the Elkhart Christian Eagles. The Warriors are fresh off the Northeast Corner Conference win at Central Noble last Saturday, and they bring a 4-1 record into tonight's contest. Elkhart Christian under the direction of their sixth year head coach, Chad Hibbard. They also bring a winning record into tonight's play. The Eagles are two and one with their wins coming versus a couple of familiar schools to Westview in Hamilton and Prairie Heights. And their lone loss came at Fremont in the Battle of the Eagles. And of course, Fremont, an NECC opponent for the Warriors. Last year, Elkhart Christian gave Westview all they could handle in tightly contested battle on Elkhart Christian's home floor, with the Warriors finally pulling away in the fourth quarter for a 10-point win, 54-44, to over at Elkhart. Tonight's game sponsor is Weaver Furniture Sales, with two locations in Shipshawana, south of US-20 on Connie Road, 075 North, and in the Davis Mercantile on Main Street in downtown Shipshawana. Our pregame sponsor is JNR Solutions. Our halftime sponsor is Pizza Depot in Millersburg and with their new location opening soon in Middlebury. This evening's game is also brought to you by Shipshawana Trading Place, featuring the Shipshawana Antique Auction every Wednesday beginning at 9 a.m. Hyde Auto Body, US 20 West in LaGrange. Yoder Crossroads, located south of Shipshawana on the southwest corner of State Road 5 and US 20. Emma Warehouse in downtown Emma. Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street in Topeka. Stutzman Power Equipment on US 20 West in Shipshawana. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. By Shipshi Automotive Service, they thrive by focusing on the fastest high quality auto repairs for your car or truck. Just south of US 20 on State Road 5. Laguana, your local creative services provider. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Animal Care Clinic of Topeka, located directly across from the Topeka Sale Barn on East Lake Street in Topeka. By Jerry Standard Service in downtown Middlebury. And Southwind Flooring, featuring carpet, hardwood, laminate, tile, natural stone, and LVT, and of course, also area rugs. Located at 7300 North, 1000 West, in Shipshawana. Tonight's game is a presentation of Laguana Media and the IHSAA Champions Network. We'll be back with today's JNR Solutions pregame show after this word from our game sponsor, Weaver Furniture Sales. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana invites you to visit their expanded showroom filled with a complete line of solid hardwood custom-made furniture for your entire home. You'll also find a wide selection of recliners, couches, chairs, and many more home furnishings to suit anyone's taste. Weaver Furniture, located just south of US Highway 20 on County Road 75 North. Weaver Furniture sales in Shipshawana, family owned and operated since 1989. Yes. Tonight's Westview pregame show is brought to you by JNR Solutions, providing unlimited high speed internet no matter where you live. Call them at 574-349-7673. And we begin our pregame show with Jamie Miller's interview of head coach Chandler Pribble of the Westview Warriors. Conference win. Uh, talk about some of that game and, and uh, maybe some of the players that stood out on our team for you in that game. Yeah, um, you know, guys competed hard. We got a lead. Uh, in the second quarter and then never let go of it. Um, you know, we did a good job. Uh, you know, we're getting better at learning how to finish those games and keep that lead instead of giving up a big lead. And like last year, we really struggled with that for most of the year. Yep. Um, maybe that free throw rule has helped us a little bit. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, Luke Helmuth played really well. Uh, felt like Caden Grau played really well. Um, but our guys defensively, our intensity was good. Our talk was pretty good. Uh, our help side rotations have gotten a lot better in the last week or two. So uh, it's, it's cleaning up a lot of things for us on that end of the floor. From, a, from our perspective, it just seems like you guys are really unselfish. You, you got a couple of seniors that are willing to sacrifice some, you know, coming off the bench and they have a certain role right now. And 
And uh, it just seems like you're very unselfish. Is that, what are you seeing out there? Is it what you want to see or what are you looking for? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's what kind of every coach wants a team that actually is that unselfish. Um, and we have guys where, you know, last night to start the game, or not last night, uh, but against Central Noble to start that game, I think Caden Grau had like eight of our eight to start, right. I think. Right, yeah, he did. Um, and nobody, you know, it's not like Luke was looking at him like, come on, man, pass me the ball. No, right. we just, we just want to win. And, and I think our guys, you know, you're saying that as a, as a guy that's just watching. And I think that that's, that's what people perceive because that's what, what our expectation is. But also our guys, they understand what is a good shot and what's not a good shot. And they want the best shot for our team so that way we can win. Yeah, very obvious to, uh, so far in this season. That's what's happening. Good. So. Uh, tonight, Elkhart Christian, a team we don't play a lot. In fact, the second time ever. Okay. So we had a unique experience last year with uh, Aiden Hibbard uh, having a good second half. So besides him, he's back this year. He had what, 31 last year. What uh, what players should we look out for tonight that we need to stop or, or maybe some roles that some other players would have that we're going to keep an eye on? Uh, well, they had, a, they had a guard last year, uh, number zero, uh, last name uh, Bevier. Um, and he's not played this year, uh, but he's out there tonight. So I think, you know, we have a scouting report on him based on last year, uh, but I think he's another guard that's, that's probably their second best player. Um, and then uh, number five for them, um, last name Eob. Uh, he's a small guard, but he, he shoots it okay, and he, he wants to get downhill um, and try to create some stuff. But more, it's, it's more their defense. Uh, they like to play a 1-2-2 two, two, full court and half court and want to get a lot of deflections and play fast. So if we just okay. take care of the basketball, I think that we can get good shots. Um, and then defensively, we obviously have to know where Hibbard's at and make sure that we're trapping him on ball screens and making him give it up and make the other guys have to make plays. Yeah. All right. Good luck tonight, Coach. Thank you. We'll be back to Westview right after this. Are you looking for unlimited high-speed internet? With no contract and no credit check. No matter where you live, it's available. Bringing America together. JNR Solutions, Internet Service Provider. Call them at 574 349 7673. Back at Westview, both teams have returned to their locker room. As we prepare for the tip-off for this Tuesday night game here at Westview, the Westview Warriors at 4-1 and one and the Elkhart Christian Eagles coming in at 2-1. and one. Good to have you along tonight. Kind of a sparse crowd, so if you're just sitting at home thinking, oh, it's not too bad, maybe I'll drive out to Westview. Come on out. There's plenty of seating <laughs> available out here. It's a little different than normal on a Friday or Saturday night game. Right, we uh, even the other night at Central Noble where it was a pack, pretty much yeah. packed house on both sides. And so, yeah, Tuesday nights are usually a little less uh, less full and an unknown opponent, I think, doesn't, doesn't right. help as much. It makes a difference. You know, yeah. they're a smaller school. They don't bring a lot of fans. But we had a really good one over there last year. Uh, first time we had ever played them. So this is the first time uh, that I believe that they've ever been at Westview. Last year we had a... Well, a 37-23 lead uh, early third quarter, and then Aiden Hibbard went on a shooting clinic and was chucking threes in from here oh and my, there. And everywhere. He got on a roll, and he, we yes. couldn't hardly stop him. In fact, I believe he scored all their points in the second half, uh, all 25. Well, you, I think we were talking before the game, and didn't you see he had six in the first half and right. he scored the rest of his points all in the second half. So, yeah, that was uh, the, uh, what's his first name, Aiden Hibbard game <laughs> yeah number 14 and we uh, i don't think he had a better game the whole year although he did have a good season last yeah, year. yeah he averaged he's came in coming in averaging 19.6 points a game last year i don't know what his average is this year yeah. but definitely a guy to keep an eye out for he's by far and away their best offensive threat he does have a brother on the team and he's out there number 11 keon hibbard a uh, sophomore so those would probably be their some of their main offensive threats but they do have a guy that did not play last year because of injury that they're counting on, number five, Louis Eob. Yeah. And uh, don't have stats on him yet, but good athlete and a lefty. Seems like we play a lot of lefties anymore. Right. So, they, not in the starting lineup, but he'll probably, we'll probably see a lot of action tonight. Yeah, they think they had nine or ten warming up out there, so they probably go a, a little bit deep in their bench. Uh, another one that uh, the coach mentioned, Chandler it, in that pregame interview was Bevere, the 
5'11 senior number zero, and we noticed when he was warming up, he's pretty athletic and probably a guy to keep an eye on as well. Yeah, I think he was, uh, a lot, he played quite a bit last year, I believe, in that game. And I don't remember him scoring too much, but, right. you know, there's a big difference in a, a high school kid between their junior and senior year just in how they develop physically and whatever they can work on skill-wise. So I'm sure they're excited to play here tonight. And um, we're excited to play again. It's a whole lot better than practicing. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this team just seems to love to play and to love to play together. So I'm looking forward to uh, a good spirited game tonight. And our national anthem. Another beautiful rendition of our national anthem, this time by Hope Miller, a student here at Westview, and what a fantastic job she did. Puts a lot of, uh, for a, as small as she is, she certainly put out a lot of sound there for the national anthem. Good job by Hope. Okay, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups and we'll introduce them as they come out for their respective coaches. Chad Hibbard, 51 and 69, in this being his sixth year at Elkhart Christian Academy. Starting at one guard will be L.J. Bevere, a 5'11 senior. He's number zero. Number three coming out now is Malachi Redmond, a 6'2 senior. Number 11, Keon Hibbard, a 5'9 sophomore. Number 14, Aiden Hibbard, a 5'11 senior who we were spoke, speaking about earlier, being the leading scorer last year with 31 points against the Warriors. Rounding out the lineup for Elkhart Christian, number 15, Caden Hidden, 6'3 junior. And now four hour Warriors coming in at four and one overall. Number 15, Austin Slaybaugh, a 6'1 freshman, averaging 3.2 points per game. Number 21 is sophomore Caden Grau at 10.4 points per game. Caden is 6'3", sophomore. Number 33, senior team leader Luke Helmuth, a 6'1", senior, averaging 13 points per game, and he leads his team in assists with 19 so far this year. Number 35 is Wiley Minix, a 6'2 senior, averaging 10.2 points per game, and he leads the team in rebounding with 26 rebounds for the year. And Wyatt Zepp at 11.6 points per game, leads his team in that department, and he's also pulling down 24, or has pulled down 24 rebounds for the Warriors. Wyatt is a big guy, 6'6". And he's a senior and he's headed for Concordia Lutheran College back up in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. As that was just announced this week, he'll be playing basketball and continuing his studies up there come next fall. Well, I, I didn't know that, that's interesting. Yeah, that just was announced, uh, well, I saw it on social media yesterday. But yeah, so, well, I actually, uh, yeah, Andrew Byler, had sent us a clip of that. It came off of uh, X. <laughs> Tip is controlled by Elkhart's Christian. 
with the basketball. As the aforementioned Aiden Hibbard, number 14. He'll get it to his brother, Keon Hibbard. Out front now will come to Bevere. Westview comes out a man to man, as usual. With the ball, Redmond now. He'll drive it toward the basket, but he traveled. He got caught, caught up on his chest and ended up taking an extra step. Got a couple of veteran officials out here. Bob Neff is one of them from, from LaGrange. He's been officiating games for a long time. Austin Slaybaugh has a little bit of problem out there close to midcourt. Yeah, Zero has got his hands all over him. The other night he'd have four fouls already. <laughs> but they're letting him uh, grab and hold so far today. The ball knocked out of bounds by Redmond, so it'll stay in the possession of Westview. The well, other official that I know has been around for a while is, I can't think of his first name, but it's Patrick. Uh, his, Brett Patrick used to, uh, his dad used to coach down at Whitco a long time ago. And he finished his career at Tip Canoe Valley. And I believe he was at Manchester the same time you were with Dan Byler. <laughs> Hibbard, Ian Hibbard, he'll get it to Devere. Now out front, it'll come to Whitten. Now Aiden Hibbard drives it into the paint, gives off to um, Devere. Shots missed, and back comes Luke Helmuth with the basketball. Inside pass to Zepp, and he has it knocked away. Fall away jumper is good off the baseline by Luke Helmuth. So the Warriors are first to score here tonight after, what was that, their third possession? Two to nothing, Westview. Yeah, both teams starting out pretty intense defensively. Not a whole lot of room to move out there. I don't know if Wyatt's gonna know what to do guarding a guy that's three inches shorter than <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Ball stolen by Westview with the ball. Minix, he'll give it to Slay Ball. They'll swing it around to Luke Helmuth. Now underneath the up. A little Davy hook, no good. And the rebound's yanked down by Bevere. Aiden Hibbard controlling out front. Good defense by Luke Helmuth. They'll get it to Bevere. Bevere drives on Slay Ball and gives off to Ian Hibbard. He misses, and Growl yanks the rebound down for Westview. Peyton Growl gets off the Slaybaugh. Baseball pass up front off the hand, but into the hands of Wyatt, Wiley Minix. Elkhart is really chasing the ball. If we can get some ball fakes and get the ball moving, we should get a wide open shot out of this. Yeah, we're, we're still adjusting, it looks like. Ball knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay in Westview's hands. It was deflected out by Elkhart Christian. Yeah, it's pretty sloppy out here right now. Yeah, their is. defense is very unconventional. And I think we're <laughs> trying to figure it out. It's like, how do we run a play right. when there's three guys running at me with the ball? You, you can tell we're trying to make that adjustment, and it's going to take a little while, I think. Wiley. Shoots it out front to Luke Helmuth. Now to Wiley. Tries to get it down low to Zepp, and it's kicked out of bounds by Elkhart. Oh, it's a foul underneath on the baseline. They list the height for Whitten. He's 6'3", six, three, six, three, three, what okay. he's listed, yeah. yeah. First foul of the ball game by either team. And Caden Whitten picks it up for Elkhart Christian. In the corner, Minix left side, misses a shot off the back of the rim. Micah Miller has just checked in, grabs a rebound, but tries to shoot it outside, and it's intercepted. Hibbard with it, and that's Ian Hibbard. He'll give it to Bevere, and now to Caden Hibbard, or Aiden Hibbard, rather. Bounce pass on the wing, takes it down on the baseline as Bevere. Good defense by Slayball. He causes, it, causes a turnover, and back comes Wiley Minix, and he has his pocket pick, but it goes out of bounds as Redmond came in there trying to steal the ball. Wade Springer coming in for Westview. Caden Grau will come out. 
Four and a half minutes to go, first quarter, two nothing Westview. Carter Hunt checking in, he's a 6'4 senior for Elkhart. Looking to get it in as Wiley Minix bounce passes it to Wade Springer. Out front to Micah Miller. Luke Helmuth now from three, it's short, but uh, put back is tipped up and in. He missed the first shot, but Wiley stayed with it and tipped it in. Four zip Westview. Hibbert drives it all the way in, puts it up, misses a shot, deflected around, goes out of bounds, and now that goes off the body of Luke Helmuth. It looks like he was shaken up a bit as he hit the floor after all the action underneath the Elkhart Christian bucket. Yeah, he's uh, not quite sure yet if he can walk or not. He's kind of hobbling, so they're going to bring in uh, uh, Caden for him. Caden comes right back in the ball game after he came out and Micah Miller checked in. So now we have Caden Growl, Micah Miller, Wiley Minix, Austin Slaybaugh, and Wade Springer on the court for Westview. Inbounding is Keon, and there's a pass into his brother Aiden Hibbard, and he hits uh, three. Okay. Yeah, we, we had a guy there, but just not quite quick enough. Double team to Springer. He gets it out of trouble to Wiley Minix and out of Slayball. They are really overplaying. We're going to start uh, figuring this out here pretty soon, I think. But right now, we're looking really sloppy. Yeah, it's, uh, that's the only way you can dis describe it. It's just sloppy and discombobulated out there right now. Wiley Minix will inbound for Westview underneath their own basket. Out front pass comes to Austin Slaybaugh. Quick pass to Springer. Micah Miller. Elkhart well, Christian definitely came to play on the defensive end. They're really playing hard and getting into passing lanes. And yeah, they've been pretty impressive so far. Micah Miller. Hard pass inside, a little bit too hot to handle, and it's deflected into the hands of Aiden Hibbard. He'll drive it all the way in. Good block by Austin Slaybaugh, the freshman. Got his hand in there and just rejected it. Wiley drives it. He'll put up a little jump hook and got it. Yeah, something like that can really spark you, a little good defensive play like that. On the other end, I'd like to see Mike just take that up. He made a good move, and then right. that's all. That's a difficult pass to catch, a rocket pass down. <laughs> right, right <laughs> at the feet. Yeah. The ball knocked away into the hands of Austin Slayboy. He tips it up to Wade Springer, and Wade will set it up out front to Austin. He drives, gives off to Caden, who's open for three misses. Good block out on the boards there by Redmond, and back comes Elkhart Christian. Down by three, six to three, Westview. With the ball, Hibbard in the corner, Bevere. Gets it down low, and we have a whistle and a fouls called on Westview on the baseline. Wyatt Zepp's going to come into the ball game. Looks like he's going to come in along with Camden Yoder. Austin Slaybaugh comes out along with Wiley Minix. And inbounding will be Keon Hibbert, or no, that's uh, Aiden Hibbert. Aiden in the corner, gets the pass back. Now Bevere from the corner for three, and he hits. And that ties it up at six. 2.10 to go, first quarter. Shot by Zepp, doesn't go, and Caden Grau chased down the offensive rebound. Wade Springer to Micah Miller. Interesting lineup out there. I don't think we've gone with Zepp and Miller too much before. Bounce pass down low to Hunt. He gets it back out front. Once again, it's Bevere with the three-point shot. And Coach, Coach Chandler Pribble wants to talk things over with his team. Nine to six, Westview. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Shipshe Automotive Service provides five-star auto repair services 
the Shipuana area. See Shipshi Automotive's professional auto repair technicians for advanced diagnostics for your vehicle. From suspension and alignment to AC repair, brakes, and general maintenance with Shipshi Automotive Service, you gain a partner you can trust with all your auto repair needs. Shipshi Automotive Service also provides 24-hour towing service. That's Shipshi Automotive Service, 260-768-7119. And we're back. Both teams will be breaking out of their huddle here. A minute 43 to go first quarter. And Elkhart Christian has a lead at 9-6. to six. Two straight three-point shots from their senior 5'11", L.J. Bevere. Cade Growl inbounding to Wade Springer. And Wade will bring it up. Gets it to Zepp. Zepp double team. Tries to get it down low to Micah Miller. And it goes right through him and out of bounds, not touched by Elkhart Christian, so it'll be their ball on the turnover. Yeah, we just don't look like we're quite ready to go tonight. Yeah, we're throwing passes that don't make any sense. We're, we're not catching it cleanly. We're not even dribbling it cleanly open in the open court with nobody around. So they just uh, they need a little spark here. Redmond down the baseline. He travels with the basketball. Looked like he took an extra step in there. So a turnover on Elkhart Christian, and Keon Hibbard had come out momentarily now, he or temporarily, now he's back in as Redmond will come out of the ball game. Well, the other night we went on a little run. We got down early, what, 6 nothing, and then we went on, or Caden went on an 8-0 run by himself. That's right. But, you know, that involves hitting shots, which we're not doing. No, nope, not so far. Springer drives it down on the baseline. Good defense down there by Hunt. Zepp on the wing. Takes it into the paint and gives off. And now we got a traveling violation against Zepp as it got caught up under his arm. And he's whistled for traveling. Bevere inbounds it to Hibbard, Aiden Hibbard. Wade Springer guarding him. He drives around and then gives off to his brother, Keon, from the corner, and he hits a three. Wow. Well, the last thing you want to do is let an underdog get, get hot and get confident. All of their points have come from three-point land. I think that's what we need to do right there. We need to drive the ball to the basket. That's right. We're not doing that. We're throwing, throwing it to the post occasionally, but we're not getting good shots, and we're... Yeah, we're just trying to play perimeter right now. and That sends Wade to the free throw line on that drive. Trying to get the Warriors back in this ball game. It's his first. Yeah, that ended a 9-0 run there for. Whew. Yeah, they had us doubled NCAA. up at 12 to 6. Springer, three out of or four out of five now for the free throw line this year. And now five out of six as he hits them both. And it's a four point ball game. I thought Wesley might go to something a little full court to try to change the pace a little bit. ECA breaks the press, ball stolen away. Good job by Caden Growl and Camden Yoder takes a shot from the corner, right side misses. And the rebound is pulled down by Carver Hunt. Shot with plenty of time left. There's about three seconds on the clock, and Aiden Hibbard launched it from way out and missed. And we played the first eight minutes of basketball here at Westview. Elkhart Christian Academy, 12, Westview, 8. We'll be back with second quarter action right after this 60-second break. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota compact tractors so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% zero APR for up to 84 months and save up to $1,400. Visit the new Yoder Crossroads Complex in Shipshawana. Start your day off right with locally roasted coffee at Five Lakes Coffee. Speedy drive through or enjoy the aroma and coffee inside. Breakfast and lunch at the Corn Crib Cafe offering daily lunch specials and featuring Yoder popcorn, 
quality popcorn since 1936. Homemade caramel corn and free samples while you browse our gourmet shops. That's Yoder Crossroads, 5 and 20, Shipshawana, Indiana. And we're back and ready to start the second quarter. Elkhart Christian, if you're just joining us, has gone out to a 12 to 8 lead in that first quarter, and they'll get the ball to start the second quarter. Many times over the last few years, we've seen Westview kind of start slow and adapt to what the opponent's doing. So we'll see if this second quarter we can we can adapt a little bit. Well, we've seen these players adjust in the past, and I'm, they are certainly capable of it. They just have to execute. Aiden Hibbard gets yep. a first two of the night for Elkhart Christian. And We're in a, uh, they're going to a little bit of a press now. Trying to trap. Grau, oh, Camden had the shot underneath, but then he had a 6-3 Caden Wind com coming at him. Turnaround jumper from the high post, right side's no good by Wiley Minix, and back comes Elkhart Christian. And what do we have? It's going to be a foul on Westview. Springer tried to get there and set up. I guess they said he wasn't there quick enough. That was a, I wish I wouldn't have blown my whistle, but I got to call something now. <laughs> yeah, that, he did look <laughs> a little stunned, yeah. like, oh, no. <laughs> well, the positive about it is he wouldn't have called it. The guy made the shot. So right now they think they can't miss. Right. Yeah, that was supposed to be on Wade. Oh, wow. Yeah, that. They gave Grau the foul and he ran over Wade. Oh, does that get changed? Oh, another three by Bevere. His third three of the night. Pass inside to Minix. He'll give off the Springer double team. Inside Grau, puts it up, misses. Tipped up and in by Wiley Minix. Wiley with his second tip in tonight. Shots up, missed this time by Bevere. And back comes Westview down seven. And we have an injured player at the other end as Wade Springer's getting up slow. He's holding his knee. He's going to come out of the ball game. Austin, or no, that's uh, Daniel Yoder will come into the ball game. Another freshman for Westview, six-foot freshman Daniel Yoder into the contest now for Wade Springer as he comes out shaken up. Austin Slayball with it drives and has it knocked away, but we've got a reach-in foul called on Elkhart. Yeah, one reason Elkhart's defense has been so good tonight is they are grabbing and holding like I haven't seen all year, and they're getting away with it. That called one that time, but... Our guys just got to put their head down and play stronger and uh, and overcome what's happening. Minix way out front on the pass to Slayball. He'll get it to Minix. Grau now with it. Hits Minix on the back door. Reverse layup is blocked away and grabbed by Redmond. Quickly up court to Aiden Hibbard, turnaround jumper, no good. Caton Grau pulls it off the glass for the Warriors. Nice D there by Austin again. Slaybaugh to Minix. Caden Grau, he'll hit Zepp. Zepp wide open on the wing, tries to drive the baseline, gets it out of trouble to Austin. He'll drive, puts it up, no good off the glass, but he's fouled. That'll be a two-shot foul coming for Austin Slaybaugh. Well, this is a good lesson for our team, you know. We've, we've had it going pretty well lately. We've come out flat. I think yeah. we've been taken by surprise just a little bit. And Definitely. so it's a chance to regroup, mentally get uh, get where we need to be and, and make the adjustments we need to. Because right now, they're, uh, Elkhart's playing harder. They're hitting their shots, and they're having fun out there. We look a little bit discombobulated. Well put. Austin Slaybaugh hits one of his two free throws. 17-11 now, Westview down six. 5.45 to go first half. 
What's I think this end, this is the end it's got to start. They're getting wide open shots. We've got to get on them and, uh, and get out in transition. Hibbard missed that long range three. That's open right there for Austin. I think he can take Hibbert off the dribble, but he didn't take it that time. Minix drives, pulls up, gives off to Micah Miller. Out front over to come to Caden Grau. Grau hits Micah Miller, but he can't hold on underneath. It goes off his hand and out of bounds. But there was better movement on that possession. Yes, it, there right. was. Yep. Coach Preble telling Austin the same thing. Take it. He had a wide open lane. <laughs> We need him to play a little bit selfishly when he can take the ball to the basket like that. Well, Aiden Hubbard, good defense by Slaybaugh. On Aiden Hibbert. Pass inside, Hunt puts it up, misses. Wiley up for the rebound, and it's knocked out of bounds as Aiden Hibbert came in and knocked it out of bounds, so it'll be Westview ball. Little one two two press here by Elkhart. Growl crosses the timeline on the pass to Minix. Back out front to Slaybaugh. Now Micah Miller tries to feed Daniel Yoder inside, and it's he's hit from behind. Well, That's I don't think Daniel Yoder will be any on any scouting reports for Elkhart Christian, well, will he? I'm sure he won't. <laughs> He's played a little bit, but not much this year. Shots up, in and out, won't go for Micah Miller, and Aiden Hibbert grabs a rebound. Quickly up court. Shot by Keon Hibbert is missed, and right there for the rebound, Austin Slaybaugh. Four and a half minutes to go first half. Daniel Yoder to Micah Miller in the corner. Once again, Elkhart. Playing that tenacious defense, forces the turnover. Back comes Keon Hibbert. He puts it up and scores. That's only the second two-point basket of the evening for Elkhart Christian. All their other points have been scored from beyond the arc. Another foul on Elkhart Christian. Devere picks up foul number two. Full timeout called by Westview's Chandler Pribble. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Host your next conference or retreat in the heart of Amish country at the Farmstead Inn and Conference Center in Shipshawana. Our beautiful Amish-inspired inn is within walking distance to downtown shopping, theater, and delicious food. The perfect setting for any event. Located across from the famous Shipshawana auction, where every Wednesday at 9 a.m. you can find deals on furniture, antiques, primitives, art, glassware, tools, architectural salvage, and so much more. Plan the perfect getaway. Visit ShipshawanaTradingPlace.com. Now's the time to get a great deal on taking care of your property. You need the number one rated reliability of Kubota compact tractors so you can do it all and do it right. Z-Series mowers that deliver a quality cut and Sidekick utility vehicles where durability meets speed. Right now, bring home select Kubota equipment for zero down, 0% 0 APR for up to 84 months and save up to $1,400. And we're back. That timeout was called by Elkhart Christian, and they had all the momentum. You know, you'd think they did. The, yeah, coach is really searching. Coach Preble is searching right now for the lineup to, to counter this right. uh, this aggression. By curious, so we have two freshmen in there. Yeah, Daniel Yoder and and of course Austin Slaybaugh are both still in the ball game. So now they're going to a one-two-two. Wiley couldn't wait to take that three, and he hits. So Wiley now with nine leads us in scoring and that gets that Elkhart Christian lead down to 19-14. Keon Hibbert gets it to his brother Aiden now down low. It'll come to Hunt and he has it knocked away and stolen. Caden Grau come, brings it up. Slaybaugh. Quick pass inside, ill-advised, trying to hit Daniel Yoder, but tipped away into the hands of Micah. Good work underneath. Slaybaugh is mugged under there, and he'll go to the stripe shooting, too, as Hunt came in and knocked the ball away. And 
Got a big piece of Austin Slaybaugh. And Mike is really good at, at finding people that are open inside, but I think he needs to shoot the ball. He, yeah, you're those you're five are, feet away. Right. Those you're, are bunnies. You're very good from that distance, and he needs to he needs to keep doing that. I, mean, I can see a guard, a 5'8 guard, penetrating and then giving it off to somebody, but Mike is over six feet tall, and he can take those shots. Yeah, we need some some uh, somebody inside to kind of take charge a little bit. We have an advantage in there. We're just not using it. Wyatt Zepp comes back in. Micah out. Free throw is missed by Austin Slaybaugh. Bevere out front. He's guarded by Daniel Yoder. Now they'll give it to Widden. New guy in the lineup is Liam Elkins, number 10. Long three is no good by Aiden Hibbard, and Grau chases it down. He'll get it up to Slaybaugh, drives it, and passes right into the hands of Elkhart Christian's Caden Whitten. But he can't control it, goes out of bounds. It'll be Westview ball. Well, we're a little frustrated out there right now. We're driving baseline, jumping in the air, throwing passes. That's not fundamental basketball. And we're just trying to make plays out there. So we just need to relax. Despite how we're playing, we're only down five. That's right. It's just a couple of quick baskets, and we'll be right back on it. There's Minix again. Misses this time from the opposite side. And here comes Aiden Hibbard, and he misses a shot, but he's fouled. That's going to go against Wade Springer, and that'll be his second. Or no, they, they gave the other foul to, that's right, they gave the foul to Growl. Should have been Springer. Aiden Hibbard hits his first free throw tonight to go along with a three-pointer and a regular field goal. Well, Luke got hurt early in the game, or at least it looked like he got hurt, and he hasn't been back in. That's a little disconcerting and so right there. Our, our guy that leads kind of is our leader by example of right. doing the dirty play, di not dirty plays, but the dirty work. The uh, the physicality is not in there. We need somebody else to step up and take over that role to get kind of get us rolling. And that's when he's at his best, when we're down like this and we need somebody to get the job done. Senior leadership and the aggressiveness. Tipped up by Daniel after the miss by Springer and we just can't buy a basket. 21-14. Elkhart Christian by seven. Two minutes to go in the first half. Well, the basketball, Elkins. And trying to get it to Malachi Redmond, and it goes through his hand and out of bounds. So it'll be a turnover on four stun, Elkhart Christian. And now let's see if Westview can take advantage of it. So did he completely leave the gym? No, he's sitting down there okay. on the end of the bench. Well, that's I think for a while he was he was sitting uh, with his leg up, but I didn't see other than that. Good pass inside to Daniel Yoder. Good no-look pass. Was that uh, Caden? Yeah, Brown? I believe that was great. Nice well, we had good feet. ball movement that, si that time. Long shot by Keon Hibbard, misses, but there for the putback was Liam Elkins. And now a 30-second timeout called by Westview. 23-16, a minute and 11 to go in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Home improvement supplies for your home, RV, or manufactured home don't have to cost an arm and a leg. Here's a secret the big box stores don't want you to know. Emma Warehouse has the products you need at below retail prices, including windows, doors, trim, furnaces, flooring, hardware, paint, and more. Emma Warehouse is located six miles west of LaGrange in downtown Emma. Call 260-593-2769 for more information. 23-16, a minute 11 to go in the first half. 
assistant coach Russ Yoder and Brett Patrick are having a nice little discussion down here along with now well, I think Coach Fribble has joined in. I think there's a lot of, and they're handling it well, but there's a lot of frustration down there on our side. Oh, yeah, they they think some of the refing, uh, I think they think it's too physical out there, not getting any calls. And uh, then we're not hitting any shots, and we're turning it over, and we're not rebounding. So you name it, it's happening. Well, and I think you might have mentioned this off the air, but we're coming off a game that a uh, whistle was blowing for breathing on somebody down at Central Mobile. Yep, absolutely. Daniel Yoder hits a three. So he's made Wesley's last five points, 23 to 19 now. Wesley only down four. Driving, shot is Missed badly there underneath by Elkhart Christian. I don't have his number on my uh, score sheet, number 22. Westview, Wade Springer shot, misses off the back of the iron, pulled down by Aiden Hibbert. He's going to drive at the length. He'll scoop it up and score. Yeah, I don't think he wanted that shot by Wade with 20 seconds to go. I thought he said one shot. Six seconds. Now Springer from beyond the arc. His shot's off. And the ball's loose on the floor. And time expires in this first half of play. And Westview will go to their locker room down six, 25 to 19, to Elkhart Christian, who's come out here on fire from the field. Shooting, let's see, they had four, five three-pointers in this first half and have played tenacious physical defense on the Warriors. And so there's gonna be adjustments made in that locker room by Chandler Pribble. At halftime, it's Elkhart Christian 25 and Westview 19. We'll be back with first half scoring and stats with Jamie Miller and Dan Byler right after this two minute break. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street, Topeka. Mouth-watering home-cooked goodness all in a friendly down-home atmosphere among friends and neighbors. Different daily specials, all-you-can-eat fish twice a week, scrumptious buffets featuring our fried chicken, and then finish it off with a slice of fresh-baked pie. Eat in our large dining room or carry out at 260-593-2988 and now offering delivery within 10 miles of Topeka. Pizza Depot on South Jefferson Street in Millersburg features delicious pizza and breadsticks, along with fresh salads. Dine-in, carry-out, and delivery are all available at Pizza Depot. Pizza Depot, 104 South Jefferson Street in Millersburg. 574-642-4222. Welcome back to Westview High School. We're at halftime. Elkhart Christian has a surprising 25-19 lead uh, on the Warriors. Uh, they jumped out to a 12-8 lead after one quarter, extended that lead in the second quarter, outscoring us 13-11. For uh, Elkhart Christian, maybe one of the surprises of this first half is L.J. Bevere with nine points on three three-pointers. 5-10, uh, Liam Elkins with the basket. Keon Hibbert added five, and Aiden Hibbert, who we talked about extensively in the pregame, added nine points for Elkhart Christian. For Westview, 
Pretty balanced scoring. Wade Springer with a basket. Austin Slayball with one free throw. Luke Helmuth with a basket. Wiley Menix is high point man tonight. He's got nine points uh, coming in averaging 10.2. And Daniel Yoder, uh, second leading scorer tonight off the bench uh, in his first extensive varsity action uh, this year with five points with a three and a two pointer. So six foot number 45 out there, Daniel Yoder. So Westview started out kind of slow and it really didn't get any better from there. They are, uh, they're a little bit discombobulated. Their passes are not, they're not hitting the intended target very often or they're low or they're high or they're, they're, they're out of the shooting pocket or you know, where they need to be to get good shots. And so Elkhart Christian's defense is really kind of unorthodox. And this is where you just got to kind of grab the ball and make a play, drive it to the basket, get them in foul trouble a little bit. I don't think they go real deep and we're not doing that. So I think the, uh, the halftime adjustments will be more about maybe mental adjustments and physicality more than plays or anything like that. So uh, Dan is, is here now with a few other stats to maybe illuminate what is, what's going on out there. Well, in, in the uh, first, uh, first quarter, we were out rebounding them eight to five. Second quarter, uh, pretty much Aiden Hibbert himself about out rebounded us he had five rebounds along with uh, six points but he put up a lot of other shots so he was definitely in the midst of everything that uh, sort of hit making everything happen you talked about the fact that they hit five threes uh, the fact is they at one point they were four of five from the three-point range in the first quarter and they'd missed one right at the end of the quarter I think so now so right now they're at five of ten but they're still shooting 50 percent from three-point range on the other side we're two of eleven so I think there's a huge difference there. We're not getting not getting threes that are going in. Uh, overall, we're shooting 29% from the field, and they're shooting 43%. So I think that's that's the big difference. We're still we still have a slight rebounding advantage. We're up 18 to 14, but yeah, just about everything else they're leading us. We're only three of five from the free throw line. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure what <laughs> what to say here. It's like we can't we can't string anything together. We had the lead, you know, six to three was our last lead. And their biggest their biggest lead was 11 to 19. They were up by eight, and uh, just boy, we just 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 cannot quite put anything together. Right. Yeah, it's six six turnovers for us, five for them. So that's not a huge difference, but no, it's it's shooting. You know, the last game we were here, we shot 29 percent. Tonight we're shooting 29 <laughs> percent. It's like you're on your home floor, boys. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, that's where you shoot every day. Yeah. But, you know, a little bit, I think, contributed to youth. Our starting guards are a freshman and sophomore. Their, their play tends to be a little more uneven than, than maybe seniors. But on the other hand, the seniors, you know, Wiley Minnick's had a good first half. He's almost got his average in the first half. I think one thing we're adjusting to is Luke Helmuth. He got hurt early in the game. He is our leading scorer on the air at 13 points a game and he hasn't been back that was what well two minutes into the game yeah and he, yeah even more importantly not only is he a leading scorer but when we need something he's the one driving inside playing yep you know making something happen to get into the free throw line making the free throws so even if he doesn't score he's he makes it happen yeah but, absolutely but, so I, I don't uh, don't know what the deal is with his ankle or whatever it was but yeah absolutely so we're definitely missing that leadership out there but I mean everybody I don't know if they put butter on their hands before they came out of the locker room or what but nobody can catch a pass throw a pass <laughs> shoot a good shot so I you know halftime sometimes has some I won't call them magical cures but you can reset, you can regroup, calm down a little bit. I think that's part of it. We've got to calm down a little bit. Right. See the floor. We're, we're taking the ball, and they're running three players at us, and that's highly unusual. But that also means there's three guys open, and yeah. we're not hitting them. We're just kind of throwing the ball all over the court. There's no rhyme or reason to it. We've got to get somebody in the middle of the lane, and if they're going to rush at us, throw it in the middle, turn opposite, get a layup. A few of that is going to loosen this up. We're going to play hard on defense, get some stops, and I think we can turn this thing around pretty quickly. But, they, uh, you know, when you get a team like this that has some capable shooters and you scuffle on your end, it, it, 
it can keep him in the game for a good while. That's right. So we'll hope uh, we'll hope we can get this thing turned around here shortly. I think the biggest point you guys made was that that Luke's gone, and he is, I'd say, our team leader as far as that's concerned. And we've seen him turn around ball games before when we've maybe gotten down a little bit, and so we're hoping to see Luke back out here in the second half. Another one that's missing is uh, is Owen Brill, and I understand he's under the weather and didn't even dress tonight, so he's not going to be playing either. And, you know, he was sometimes the sixth guy or first guy off the bench. Well, he's an upperclassman. Right. Knows how to play the game. Hasn't scored a ton this year for us yet, but, uh, yeah. I mean, you throw out an um, upperclassman there and uh, Luke, who's a senior, and you're bringing in a freshman. You're losing experience. Now he did play well. Daniel Uter played well offensively and defensively. So, um, yeah, this is just one of those games. Look, they don't all go pretty. No, you know, they don't. You come out, you hope you're going to run up and down the floor and score 80. Sometimes that happens, but you got to find a way to get gritty and make the plays necessary to, to, uh, to win the game. And Luke did not come out with the team in this uh, after they came out of their locker room. So, He's either getting some attention down there in the locker room. Is going to pop out later, we hope. But uh, at least right now, he's not even out on the on the floor and down on the bench with their other players. Yeah, with some conference games coming up next week, we right. hope he could uh, sit out this game if needed and get healthy, and, and that we could. We and could that, pull, that pull might it out. be what it is more of a precautionary thing. Uh, like you said, looking forward to those conference games and wanting them healthy for that. So we'll see. Hopefully it's uh, nothing too serious for uh, Luke. Absolutely. Valuable, valuable cog to the Westview offense and defense. Well, we've given the other team confidence. They're they're an experienced bunch. You know, Bevere is, was he a senior? Yeah, he's a senior. Uh, uh, Hibbard's a senior. And so, you know, they've, they've been through a lot of battles. And so they're Malachi Redmond's another starter that's a senior. So they do have three starters that are seniors on their team. Yeah, you know, we struggled with them last year a little bit. Yeah, we did. Especially yeah. in, the, in the third quarter. So we'll be uh, come out here and see what they start out. Looks like a one. No, man to man. Trying to trap. Wiley will pop it from three. A good start to the second half for the Warriors. Yeah, I think that was a play call right there to run him off that screen and get that shot. That's a big shot. Get Wiley. his confidence going. Leads us in scoring at 12 now for Wiley. Two threes tonight. Go along with six from the from the regular field goals, I should say. 25-22. Westview back within three now. With the ball is Keon Hubbard, Hibbard. Yeah, and one thing, there we go. Oh, they're going to call a kick? That's not a kick. It hit his thigh. That's what I thought. It hurt, yeah, his upper leg, yeah, something. Not his foot, but. Oh, my goodness. The referee called it from under the basket, which it seemed like he would have been blocked from there, but that's the way it is. Aiden Hibbert drives. Good defense by Wade Springer. Long three by Hibbert. Forced it up. Misses a shot. Good block out by Austin Slaybaugh as he pulls it off the glass. Wade left open. Bounce pass inside to Zepp. Zepp puts it on the floor once. Puts it up. Misses, but he's fouled. So Wyatt will have two free throws coming. Yeah, good power dribble that time by Wyatt. Second foul on I Malachi think the, Redmond. I think the referee just apologized to our bench for that call. <laughs> Could be. Could be. It's like, well, thanks for the apology, but that was a fast break the other way if we'd have <laughs> yeah, had Yeah, no it. kidding. <laughs> Zepp hits his free throw. That's good to see the ball go through the basket for him. He hasn't... Uh, He's 10 for 10. Well, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> It's too late, Jerry. You already <laughs> <No>. said. <laughs> so he's 12 for 12 on the yes. year now in free throws? Yes, he is. Yeah, he's a good shooter. He's just going through one of those things where his threes aren't falling, and it'll uh, it'll turn around for him. So Westview now back within one. Pass underneath. Uh, good pass 
underneath to their star, Aiden Hibbert, and he puts it in off the glass. Yeah, and he's going to score a little, but if we can keep up this, our defensive intensity is better this half already. Just got to keep it on this end, and you know, sometimes you have to work as hard on offense as you do on defense. Good hook shot in there, but it won't go for Wyatt Zepp, and the rebound comes down to Hibbert. He'll pass it, and a shot is missed from Bevere. Off the right side, they had the right idea but couldn't uh, finish. Growl. Wade Springer, he'll pop a three. Got it! Yeah, good ball movement that time, and Wade always seems to hit some timely threes. Wade is four out of five now from three-point land this year. Beyond the arc that time, the shot's no good by Bevere. Back come the Warriors. We're all tied up, 27. Springer almost lost it out of bounds, tries to save it inbounds. Now we have a scrum, and we have a held ball. Yeah, I think that's going to be Elkhart's ball. Yep, on the alternating possession, we'll come back the other way. Yeah, the effort is better. It is, definitely. It's amazing how much difference that makes. But when uh, Hibbert gets that ball out on the break, boy, he's a... He's a jet to the other end he with the is. ball in his hand, isn't he? Pretty impressive. Not a big kid. He's only 5'11", but he can move. Hibbert hands it off to Bevere. Now to the other Hibbert, e Keon Hibbert. Yeah, I think that our perimeter defense needs to be a little tighter on the other the other players. Make it hard for them to pass the ball. Right now it's a little too easy for them. And really their entire offense is Hibbert dribbling around until somebody's free. Right. Shots badly missed and rebound comes down to Westview. Austin Slaybaugh gets it to Springer. They leave him wide open again and Wade hits another three. So back have come the Warriors, and they take a three-point lead at 30 to 27 with four and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Timeout called by Elkhart Christian, and we'll be back right after this 60-second break. paint job need a refresh? Got too many dings and scratches? Let Hyde Auto Body take care of it for you. No matter the type of vehicle, motorcycle, trailer, or truck cap, Hyde Auto Body's experienced paint specialists will attend to every detail so you don't have to. We aim to be number one in customer service and your satisfaction is always guaranteed. We're located west of State Road 9 on US 20. Hyde Auto Body, a trusted name in the community for over 20 years. And we're back, 30 to 27. Westview's taking the lead here in the third quarter. Just about halfway through the quarter, four and a half minutes to go. And Elkhart Christian will be inbounding right in front of the Westview bench. So this is the same margin as our last lead at what, six to three? That's right. Bounce pass comes in from Hunt to Keon Hibbard. That's it, make them work. We need to make them work, test their ball handling. Hunt cross courts it to Bevere, stops in the paint, gives off to Keon Hibbard. Good defense by Austin Slaybaugh as he strips it away and puts it into the hands of Micah Miller to Wiley Minix. Not a Springer. Caden Grau left open for three, and he hits. Totally different ball game now with in this second half for the Westview Warriors. It's like a bad cold, it's just contagious. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Shot missed by Aiden Hibbard. 
Pass down to Wade Springer, misses a layup, but it was a tough shot. But Westview maintains control, puts it up, misses. Tipped out of bounds. Good try by Austin Slaybaugh trying to get in the air, but I don't think I would have counted anyway because I don't think he can jump out of bounds and catch a ball. <laughs> jump well, you have from to, out of bounds. No. you got to establish yourself, right? right? So, yep. But can't argue with the hustle. So Yeah, back, definitely they're looking ahead. Wade made a great catch on that, and if he'd have thrown that in off the dribble, that would have been a highlight play. But That would have been. But much better effort. You saw the offensive rebounding on that possession. We right. didn't score, but. I mean, they're, uh, Elkhart's really not doing anything offensively except just driving and kicking. So Exactly. If, you know, stay in front of your man, make it tough. Like, that pass is too easy to catch right there. Yeah, I'll deny that on the way. Yeah, he's not an offensive threat. Make him go out there and. Shots up. Bad miss there again. And back come the Warriors. Slayball wide open to Springer, and he puts it in. Yeah, Austin was watching him all the way down the floor until he got open and picked the perfect time to throw that pass. Yeah, that was beautiful. 35-27, Westview's opened up an eight-point lead. Drive by Caden, Aiden Hibbard, and he missed a shot. It won't be a shooting foul. Yeah, they're starting to get a little bit frustrated. They're replacing our frustration in that first half. He's oh, just kind of right. uh, just kind of driving his body into a crowd and throwing it at the basket. Austin Slaybaugh picks up his first foul. Aiden Hibbard looking to inbound, bounce passes it into Elkins. Now they'll get it to Keon Hibbard. Tries to get the shot off. He'll force it up. No, that's Aiden Hibbard, and he does. He gets it in. Shot's good off the bench. It'll be a 30-second timeout on the court, 35-29, 2.27 to go third quarter. Back after this. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka specializes in both steel and aluminum. Their 40,000-square-foot custom powder coat facility has the flexibility to run everything from one-piece custom orders to full production quantities. They also have the unique capabilities of powder coat, glass coat, as well as other highly durable coatings. They are your local source for powder coating. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Call 260-593-0204. Yep. And we're back. 35-29 is the score. Westview has taken the lead here in the third quarter. Both teams out of their huddle now as we'll resume action. Inbounding will be Caden Grau for Westview. It looks like uh, Elkhart Christian will back up. He'll get it into Austin Slaybaugh. Yeah, they're going to go a little bit, extend their defense a little bit. But really, it started, you know, that last basket gave them four points for the quarter. Let's see, we've been able to get out in transition. Grau fakes, puts it on the floor, and oh my goodness, that went off of Elkhart Christian, but they're going to give it to Elkhart. Yeah, Caden thought they, they knocked it out from behind. Some days the calls don't go your way. At least we have the lead now. Six point lead for Westview. Third, things have turned around here in the third quarter. Aiden Hibbard drives, dishes it off on the baseline to Redmond. He misses a shot and Caden Grau pulls down the rebound. Gets it to Minix. Wade Springer drives the baseline, puts it up strong and he's fouled. Wade's having a good third quarter. Yeah, Wade, what's he averaging this year? Three points Three, a game? Yeah. He's got 10 tonight. Yeah, he's uh, going to the free throw line to boost that up even more. He's five out of six from the free throw line this year. Hits that one, and he'll get one more. 36-29. Caden Grau comes out, Wyatt Zepp back in for Westview. Yeah, I think the coaches think that they probably don't have an official diagnosis, but they're not going to take any chances. With so Luke, yeah, he just came back out. Yeah, it's a long room. season. Long three is way up, or not good, not way off the mark, but not good, and the tip up. 
No good underneath by Hunt, but he's fouled and he'll be shooting a pair from the free throw line. Yeah, we got to get that rebound. That's there's no excuse for that. Micah Miller picks up his second foul tonight. We got our big lineup in there and we just didn't, uh, didn't grab that. Wade comes out, good hand from the crowd. Timely, very timely for, uh, for Wade to have a good offensive game. That's right. His best so far this year. But you know, you think the other night, uh, Caden, out, Caden came out, had a great offensive game. Tonight he's, he's been shot is he scoreless out, he? yet? Oh, he has two free throws. Okay, so Wade, you said Wade, Dan was just saying Wade's personal high. This year or for his career? Ever. Wow. Okay. Long three by Wiley's no good, and the rebound pulled down by Hunt for Elkhart Christian. Underneath, Aiden Hibbard dishes it inside to Redmond, but he's fouled, he misses a shot. Yeah, we're just losing guys in transition tonight like I haven't seen before. I don't, maybe all our attention's on 14, and we're just losing sight of our man. Could be. But we really, we need to extend this lead. We got the momentum, and we just need to be, get gritty, do the little stuff. But last possession, we gave up an offensive rebound, which gave them one point. This time here, they're getting wide open layup and the free throws. Malachi Redmond misses his first. He'll get one more. No good off the back of the rim and the rebound. Wiley Minix. And kind of a lazy pass there, and it turns into a turnover. Yeah, exactly. Severe. So Elkhart Christian knocks the lead down to five now. Slaybaugh stops and goes. He's triple teamed on its Baseline, they'll get it around a Minix. He drives. Drow for three, misses. And Micah Miller just picked up his fourth foul. He goes up over the back. Springer back in. Coming out will be Austin Slaybaugh. Going back into the ball game will be Camden Yoder and Micah will come out. So we lose some size there. So well, now we have Camden Yoder. We have Grau still in there and Zup, Minix, and Wade Springer. Driving is Aiden Hibbert. Bounce passes it to Redmond off the baseline. It's good. 37-32. Once again, a five-point lead for Westview. Trying to get it into Zep. He's surrounded, but reached in on and fouled. Thirty-seven thirty-four is the score. I said 37-32, so it's a three-point lead for Westview. Minix looking to inbound. He'll get it out front to Caden Growl. Grau gets the screen, almost has it stolen. Minix now, he'll put it up, and that'll be a miss. Try to tip it out, and the quarter ends here. Uh, yeah, there could have been a foul called on that, but the uh, buzzer sounded. That's it for the third quarter. 37-34, Westview with a three-point lead. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Weaver Furniture Sales. in Shipshawana invites you to visit their expanded showroom filled with a complete line of solid hardwood custom-made furniture for your entire home. You'll also find a wide selection of recliners, couches, chairs, and many more home furnishings to suit anyone's taste. Weaver Furniture, located just south of U.S. Highway 20 on County Road 75 North. Weaver Furniture Sales in Shipshawana. 
family owned and operated since 1989. Host your next conference or retreat in the heart of Amish country at the Farmstead Inn and Conference Center in Shipshawana. Our beautiful Amish-inspired inn is within walking distance to downtown shopping, theater, and delicious food. The perfect setting for any event. Located across from the famous Shipshawana auction, where every Wednesday at 9 a.m. you can find deals on furniture, antiques, primitives, art, glassware, tools, architectural salvage, and so much more. Plan the perfect getaway. Visit ShipshawanaTradingPlace.com. Yeah, yeah, he did all right. And we're back, eight minutes on the clock, fourth quarter. Westview leads by three, 37 to 34. Not something I don't think anybody really expected here tonight it was a close game, but uh, it's become that. Now another steal here by Elkhart Christian, and there's a foul. Yeah, they're really attacking Wyatt out there, and he's having trouble hanging on to the ball. And once you do that a couple of times, they're going to see that. They're going to go after it every time. That's right. I think one thing that would help him is if maybe if he'd bring it up a little higher, it would be, you know, if well, they go after it, then it looks more obvious if there's a foul. When he keeps it low, then it's hard to uh, get that call. Yeah, I don't know whether coaches probably still teach that, but the big guys, they keep it up high. You don't want to put it down or the little guards will get in there and start slapping at it. Devere gets it back to Aiden Hibbard. Now Bevere drives around Grau into the paint and dishes it off to Hunt. He misses, and the rebound, Wiley Minix, our leading rebounder this year. Got Luke Helmuth at the scorer's table getting ready to go back in. Well, that's a good sign. Wade gets it out of trouble to Grau. On a baseline, driving his Zepp. He had a good move, but couldn't get it to go. Yeah, they're not giving him any calls tonight, are they? No, that could have been a foul. Bevere looking for help. He'll give it to Caden, Aiden Hibbard. He dishes it down low to Hunt, and he loses the basketball. Now we have a held ball. Daniel Yoder and Luke Helmuth will come back into the ball game. Camden Yoder out. And Wyatt Zepp will come out. And we'll see how we'll see how Luke handles it out there. Not sure what his injury was. It was his lower body. It was ankle maybe. Leg of That's what I would guess. Foul underneath, and it's gonna go against Westview. And that will go against Caden Growl. That'll be his second. Inbounding is Aiden Hibbard. And now tie up Daniel Yoder got in there and tied him up. It's just play it's just players making plays. Yeah. I mean that's what you gotta do. Sometimes the the structure and the offense isn't working. You just gotta uh, make something happen. Back come the Warriors, Wade Springer to Daniel Yoder. Inside pass from Minix to Caden Grau, and he's fouled by Keon Hibbard. That'll be his first. Back into the ball game comes Caden. Uh, Whitney for Elkhart Christian, and coming out of the ball game will be Carter Hunt. Yeah, that was a good foul, too, because we'd have had a wide open layup there. Luke bounce passes then to Minix. Springer, Daniel Yoder. Luke, wide open Minix underneath. Good work. Minix. 14 now for Wiley. Holding out front is Brevere. Now he'll give it off to Aiden Hibbard. Held him down pretty well here in the second half. 39-34. Now ball loose on the floor. Picked up by Wiley. Growl down. He'll put it up at the left hand. Can't get it, but he's fouled. 
Luke coming in and he's starting stuff. That's right. <laughs> he really um, made Keon eight, uh, Hibbard struggle handling the ball out there and that led to a turnover eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, it looked like there were several violations there, but they never called any of them. Caden Grau hits his first free throw tonight. Well, Caden, you know he's not the flow, the scoring's not flowing naturally tonight, or as easily as it did the other night. But he's keeping his composure, and he's just finding ways to make plays. He's he's ratcheted up the defense this half, and now we're gonna pick up three-quarter court and see if we can get another turnover. The Hibbards are bringing it up for Elkhart Christian. They break the timeline and now Keon Hibbard. Oh my Hibbard goodness, how did we not get that? Thought he was, uh, thought he was passing to somebody else. <laughs> we're another so foul. close to getting turnovers, it's not even funny <laughs> and somehow it always lands in their lap. And now a foul on Luke underneath. You kind of feel like Elkhart Christian's teetering on the edge here. Yeah, they, you know, yeah, we're, we're like about it. ready to, to do an eight, put an 8-0 run on him and put this game away. Keon Hibbard looking the inbound. He bounce passes it in to Aiden Hibbard. Now it's loose again on the floor. And once again, we have a held ball. And it'll stay in the possession this time of Elkhart Christian Academy. Yeah. Third tie-up for Westview here in the last few moments. I think it just goes to better effort. We're not reaching over to pick the ball up. We're diving on it. Once again, Keon Hibbert will try to get it in. He does, but the ball's knocked away again and is stolen by Westby this time. Not tied up, but stolen. Wiley left open for three. Won't go. Rebound Daniel Yoder, and he's fouled. Good offensive blackout that time by Daniel. How can they call that on the floor? He had the ball. They're going to call that on the floor. I don't believe that. Devere picks up his third foul. No, he's out. Fifth foul of the game for Bevere. Well, that's uh, that's helpful. <laughs> yeah, he's a good athlete. Yeah, he's only had two points this half, but he's he experienced. Three, and three threes in the first half. Yeah, if nothing else, he keeps the floor spread because of the threat out there. Right. Liam Elkins will check in, a 5'10 junior. Got some PT in that first half. Basket here would give us our biggest lead of the game. Luke with the ball out front, dishes it inside to Daniel Yoder. Now to Caden for three, misses. <laughs> Wade Springer, the shortest guy on the court, pulls down the re offensive rebound for Westview. Yeah, here we're, we're in control here. Let's take our time. They lost one of their, their good defenders. Let's make, uh, well, let's not do that. We got stripped, uh, Luke got stripped by Hibbard. We have a blocking foul called now on Wade Springer. That particular referee who I won't name always calls a block. <laughs> <laughs> that w I, don't, I don't agree with that one, but. So Wade picks up foul number two. And inbounding again will be Keon Hibbert. And a ball loose on for another tie-up. This time Westview gets it. So that's four now. I haven't seen this many tie-ups in a boys basketball <laughs> game all year. Especially within, <laughs> what, three or four minutes? Yeah. Yeah, good, good defense by Westview. Wiley. Gets it to Luke for three, no, in and out. Wiley tried to tip it out front, but right into the hands of Redmond. And now the shot by Aiden Hibbert is missed, but we have a whistle and a foul. And again, it's gonna go against Westview, and that's gonna be Springer. Or no, it's gonna be. I thought they called that on. Yeah, I think they, they called did. it on Elkhart Christian. Put up three, so, oh, it was. They do have a number three out there, Redmond. And that'll be his fourth. Four minutes to go in this ball game. Westview up 41-34. Luke gets it out front to Growl. Back to Luke. Wade Springer 
Now gets it to Austin Slaybaugh. Westview, good ball movement, gets it into Grau. He takes it into the paint and gives to Luke for a three, and this time Luke hits. There we go. First three of the night for Luke Elmuth. He has five, but he hasn't seen much playing time because of that early injury. The last yeah. one he shot almost went in. And yeah, just, it did. Uh, Rimmed out, went halfway down, came out. I like the confidence to take that when you haven't played much today, and I, I don't think at least one of his parts of one leg isn't feeling the best. Right. And that, you know, that affects your shot sometimes. It certainly would. 44-34 Westview, is that our biggest lead? That is our 10? biggest lead. And this is what we won by last year. <laughs> That's true. Ball tip, but goes into the hands of Aiden Hibbert, gets it out of trouble, fakes the three, and then takes it to the ball uh, to the basket and he puts it in. Yeah, just no help defense that time. 15 now for Hibbert. He'll get it to growl from uh, Austin Slaybaugh. Slaybaugh left open. He'll drive it down the lane and give off to Luke another three. Good! Two straight threes for Luke Helmo, 47-36, and it's good to see he's healthy and can <laughs> play. That was a little disconcerting. And we have an offensive foul this time. Wade did have position, and yeah. he gets rewarded for it. Yeah, he led. Aiden led with his elbow and shoulder that, that, that time. That was pretty that, obvious. That kind of yeah. gave him the. That's his first foul after all those that driving. Yeah, that's that's what's a little surprising out there. As hard as he plays and right. on both ends of the court, only one foul. 47-36, Westview with the lead. Minix to Luke. Gets it to Growl. Slaybaugh drives. Pitches it back out front to Wade Springer. We get it to Slaybaugh. Back to Springer. Well, somebody's open because they're triple team in the top of the key. <laughs> yeah, they are. Luke drives a baseline, fakes, puts it up. Misses, but he's fouled. They'll go to the free throw line. I kind of cringe when he goes in there like that. <laughs> yeah. Don't want him getting hurt again. Well, we don't know the extent of it, but one thing that, you know, the way Luke plays is not necessarily um, vertical, not an explosive right. get off the right. ground type athlete. Yeah. Uh, fast end to end and side to side, but that may not uh, be affecting him as much as it may some other players. Luke, one of our leading free throw shooters at 77%, hits his first and a timeout called. Got a 30 second timeout here. We'll keep it right here. 2.13 to go, 48-36 Westview by 12. Well, we talked about more of a, we didn't say attitude, but that was what needed adjusted at halftime. And it was just more about effort than anything. It still hasn't been pretty, but we've held them to 11 points this half. Yeah, let's see. How much, what's that uh, turnaround from? We're down six to up 11, so we all scored yeah. them by 17 this right. half. You do that in each half, you're, you got a 30-point win. So I think that's what probably everybody expected tonight. Right, but, right. you know, that's why you play the games. And it's a good lesson. Right. We haven't won it yet, but it's looking that way. But it'll be a good teaching moment for uh, for the coaching staff. Now you got to give Elkhart Christian credit. They came out here to win this ball game and yep. they played hard. They definitely have. Westview with a 12-point lead now. Luke Helmuth at the free throw line. 2.13 to go in the ball game. Don't forget, Friday night we'll be back here at Westview as the Angola Hornets will invade Westview. Luke gets both free throws. And so we'll have that game for you right here on LaguanaMedia.com. But we hope you can uh, make it out here for the contest. Offensive rebound put back by Carter Hunt. Yeah, just lack of a block out right there. I mean... Got to put the game away. You got to got to get that block out. Yeah, I'm sure on the, there'll be a, quite a few things to point out that didn't quite go the way they should have tonight. 
And a steal and a layup this time by Keon Hibbert. 49-40, Westview by nine. Minute 25 seconds to go in the ball game. Slay ball inside to Luke. We get it back out front to Wade Springer. They're gonna have to start fouling now. Slay ball, bounce passes it to Luke. Springer. And now Slaybaugh is fouled as he passed the ball to Grau, so that'll send Austin Slaybaugh to the free throw line. And that is five. Five fouls on Redmond. So he's the second Elkhart Christian Eagle to foul out tonight. He joins his teammate, L.J. Bevere, on the bench with five. Malachi Redman, a 6'3", 6'2", senior, fouls out of the contest. And now coming into the ball game for the first time tonight will be Jaden Vida, 5'8", sophomore, number two. They've got six guys on the court right now, don't they? Oh, now they don't. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't coming off the court right away. Well, you got to try everything when you're down <laughs> nine with a minute to go. 49 to 40, 66 seconds. Austin Slaybaugh hits his free throw. Second free throw up and good by Austin. 51 to 40, Westview. Pass underneath the Vita has it knocked away and it looked like he must have been fouled by uh, Luke. I think they just oh, called Luke a kick. kicked it. Okay. Yeah. So Elkhart Christian will inbound underneath their own basket. Inbounding is Elkins. He'll bounce pass it into Hunt, and Hunt's fouled on a reach in by Wiley Minix. I don't think I've seen so many people get open in the lane on inbounds plays as I tonight as I've seen all year. I mean, it's just we're a half a step slow. It has been crazy. But we're still grinding out a victory, and we got to be thankful for that. Inside a minute to go, timeout on the court by Westview. We'll take a timeout as well. We'll be back right after this 30-second timeout. Shipshe Automotive Service provides five-star auto repair services in the Shipshewana area. See Shipshe Automotive's professional auto repair technicians for advanced diagnostics for your vehicle. From suspension and alignment to AC repair, brakes, and general maintenance with Shipshe Automotive Service, you gain a partner you can trust with all your auto repair needs. Shipshe Automotive Service also provides 24-hour towing service. That's Shipshe Automotive Service, 260-768-7119. And we're back, 51 to 40, Westview by 11, 57 and a half seconds to go in the ball game. We came into this game averaging on defense, giving up 43 points a game. So we're about right at that average right now. And ultimately that's what that's what's winning games for us. I still it's still not near our best performance tonight, but we have held Hibbard to 15 points. And that's uh, half of what he had last. If he had 31 tonight, uh, we'd probably be in trouble. Yeah, we probably would be. See, and now we're only up 11. So yeah, we've done a better job on him tonight. Hunt at the free throw line, misses, and he'll get one more. That's gonna be, that could, he's a little erratic on where the ball hits. <laughs> so block out. Yeah, that was kind of odd. This time it comes off right in the middle and Wiley's there to pick it off. Wiley gets it up court. Job by Austin Slaybaugh, crowling it. Baseball pass cross court to Luke Helmuth. Luke gets to Austin. And the Warriors will try to kill the rest of this clock. And now we got another player falling out of the ball game. See, they only played six guys, didn't they, originally? I believe they're... Yeah. 
Carter Hunt yeah. fouls out. He's the third player for Elkhart Christian to foul out of the ball game tonight. Justin Anon in the ball game, number 22. Luke misses that free throw. He got one more. Luke in limited uh, playing time tonight due to his first half injury. I uh, just added to it now, but he has 11. Driving is Aiden Hibbard. Taps out front. Now I'll get it to Aiden Hibbard. His shot's going to be short off the front of the rim. He gets his own rebound, puts it up, scores, and he's fouled. Well, he's got a motor that's pretty much unmatched. <laughs> Definitely unmatched out on the court tonight. Yeah. And he just keeps going. Like the Energizer Bunny out there. He's got two, or no, one free throw coming because he made yeah. the basket. Getting set to check in will be Christian Noward for Westview. Shots up and good by Hibbard. So he now has 18 points tonight. Wiley Minix comes out. Good, good hand for Wiley. From the student section. Yeah, Elkhart calling off the uh, fouling. And Westview is going to win their fifth game of the year as time expires here at Westview. And our final score tonight, Westview 52, Elkhart Christian Academy 43. We'll take a two-minute break, and we'll be back with more scoring and stats from Dan from uh, Jamie and Dan right after this two minute timeout. Visit the new Yoder Crossroads Complex in Shipshawana. Start your day off right with locally roasted coffee at Five Lakes Coffee. Speedy drive through or enjoy the aroma and coffee inside. Breakfast and lunch at the Corn Crib Cafe offering daily lunch specials and featuring Yoder popcorn. Quality popcorn since 1936. Homemade caramel corn and free samples while you browse our gourmet shops. That's Yoder Crossroads, 5 and 20, Shipshawana, Indiana. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka specializes in both steel and aluminum. Their 40,000 square foot custom powder coat facility has the flexibility to run everything from one piece custom orders to full production quantities. They also have the unique capabilities of powder coat, glass coat, as well as other highly durable coatings. They are your local source for powder coating. Freedom Finish Works in Topeka. Call 260-593-0204. Are you looking for unlimited high-speed internet? With no contract and no credit check. No matter where you live, it's available. Bringing America together. JNR Solutions, internet service provider. Call them at 574-349-7673. Tiffany's Restaurant on East Lake Street, Topeka. Mouth-watering home-cooked goodness, all in a friendly down-home atmosphere among friends and neighbors. Different daily specials, all-you-can-eat fish twice a week. Scrumptious buffets featuring our fried chicken. And then finish it off with a slice of fresh-baked pie. Eat in our large dining room or carry out at 260-593-2988 and now offering delivery within 10 miles of Topeka. Welcome back to Westview High School where we just uh, finished Westview defeating Elkhart Christian, 52-43. to Not a very scintillatingly well-played game. That'd be a good way to put it. I don't think anybody on Westview's coaching staff is is very elated you know we had a big win the other night against central noble i think that may have something to do with it you know there are certain games you're up for and then sometimes depending on your uh, maturity level and just being human you don't uh, you don't come ready as ready to play and so that happened a little bit tonight but give them credit they turned it around in the second half outscored 
Elkhart Christian 18 to nine in the third and 15 to nine in the fourth to have a somewhat comfortable nine point victory at the end. For Westview tonight in scoring, Wade Springer, really I thought was the spark plug that got us going. He ended up with 12, he had 10 of those in the second half. Austin uh, Slaybaugh finished with three, all free throws. Caden Grau, averaging 10, had half of that. He had five all in the second half. Luke Helmuth uh, came off the bench in the late third quarter and finished with 11 points, nine of those in the second half. Wiley Minix, high score man tonight with 14. Wyatt Zepp with two. And Daniel Yoder with a surprising five points off the bench in the first, all in the first half. So 14, 12, and 11 for our top three scorers tonight. For Elkhart, LJ Bevere at 11, Maliki Redman two, Liam Elkins two, uh, Keon Hibbard seven, Aiden Hibbard 18, and Carter Hunt rounded it out with three. So it's one of those games you, I don't know that you say that much afterward in the locker room. I'm not on the coaching staff, but it's one of those where they tried hard. It just wasn't coming together. The ball is flopping all over the place and couldn't find uh, couldn't find openings. The defense was ragged, uh, but we turned it up on defense and um, made the plays we needed to. Yeah, we did. It was. Uh, I mean, it's a good win. I mean, at least we got the we'll win. We'll take the win over a loss yeah. any day. But uh, win yeah, year. didn't yeah. play well. Still won. So the one thing I do want to point out is uh, they were they were just hot as all get out. They were four of five from three-point range to start the game. They fin- So after that point, they were one of 12. So after the, that blistering three-point start for them, they right. finished the game one of 12. So that, that was a huge difference. We, they weren't getting the open threes. They weren't, in, or, or they weren't, just weren't making they them. They weren't hitting them, yeah. Yeah. We are making it a little harder on them, too. We're we, a little closer to them. And we did out-rebound them 31 to 23. And we, we, uh, yeah, we went from being two for 11 in the first half, shooting 18% from three-point range. And we shot six of 12 in the second half from okay. three-point range. So, Huge difference there. It's all about making the baskets, we, isn't it? Yeah, we started <laughs> making them, and they started missing them, so it makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, not not a one to remember, but, you know, I think I remember a similar feeling after I game over there last year, which was 54 to 44, which is very similar in right. score. And you walk away thinking, wow, um, <laughs> how good are we and, <laughs> you know, all that. But it turned out pretty well last year. It did. You know, we made it to and the they're regional, gonna but. they're gonna keep improving. They got a lot of pieces. Sometimes getting all those pieces to play together, play hard. Uh, you got young guys. You got old guys. And uh, tonight we were without Luke for a good part of the game. Owen Brill wasn't here tonight, and so people were in different roles. And uh, you know, just a good way to to gut through it and get the win. So on to Angola. Five and one now are the Warriors. And the Elkhart Christian Academy Eagles dropped a 2-2 two and two on the season with their loss here tonight. Like Jamie said, Angola will come in here on Friday night, another conference matchup and a big game. Uh, the Warriors uh, have them on their home court, which is good. And so we're looking forward to that game coming up on Friday night. We hope we see you out here. Not much of or as big a crowd as there normally is here with the Tuesday night contest, but hopefully Friday we'll have a lot more fans on hand for the ball game. I want to thank our sponsors tonight. Weaver Furniture Sales, of course, is our game sponsor for the entire season. Also, we have the pregame sponsored by JNR Solutions. Our halftime show is presented by Pizza Depot in Millersburg. And our other sponsors for this year, Shipshawana Trading Place and Shipshawana Antique Auction. Yoder Crossroads in Shipshawana, the Emma Warehouse in Emma, Tiffany's Restaurant in Topeka, Stitzman Power Equipment in Shipshawana, Freedom Finish Works over in Topeka, Shipshi Automotive Service south of Shipshawana on State Road 5. Also, Laguana, your local creative services provider. Animal Care Clinic of Topeka. 
Also by Jerry Standard in Middlebury, Southwind Flooring at 7300 North, 1000 West in Chipshawana. And today's game has been a presentation of Laguana Media and the IHS AA Champions Network. Thanks, everyone, for being here. What's the final score? Once again, the final score, Westview 52, Elkhart Christian 43. Good